to my channel and let's look at uh, spanning set of a vector space. So we've already done uh, linear combinations. There's a video on linear combinations. So we'll be borrowing much about uh, linear combinations in the, today's topic. Now, so first we define what a spanning set or vector space is. And <clears throat> we let S be a subset of uh, vector stress B. So where these are a vector space, we let S be its a subset. So S comprises of these vectors, vector U1, vector U2, up to vector Un. So the question is, when do we say that S, this subset S, spans V? When do you say that it's, it spans V? So we say that S spans V if every vector in the vector space V can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S. So if we can get any vector, if any vector in V, every vector in V, yeah, if every vector in V can be written as a, a linear combination of the vectors in S, and then we say that S is spans, S spans V, or forms a spanning set of V. Remember that it must be every vector in V must be written as a combination of these vectors. So let's look at an example just to make our definition and uh, the concept, today's concept clear. Let's look at several examples. Now we're given S, S has these vectors. This is the first vector 3, 1, negative 2, and this is the other vector 2, 4, 3, and then negative 1, negative 3, 5. The question is, show that S spans R3. So by our definition, every vector in R3 must be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S for S to be said to span R3. So for us to do this question, we need to pick a vector <clears throat> and we will take an arbitrary vector in, um, in R3 and then <clears throat> try to write it as a new combination of the vectors in S. As I've said here that let this V, let the V here, which comprises of uh, PQR, and of course this is a vector in R3. So we want to let V be this, and then we want to see whether this vector V can be written as any combination of the vectors in S. So to do that, we want to see whether we can find scalars ABC in R such that A times the first vector in S plus B times the second vector in S plus C times the third vector in S gives us our V. So this, we are very familiar with this. We know how to, to, to go about this, but let's remind ourselves what we normally do. So just expand this to get a system of linear equations. So let's expand it. <clears throat> it is A times three, which is three A plus B times two minus one plus C equals to B. And then A times one plus B times four plus negative three times C equals to Q. So doing that, we get this system of linear equations, which we solve by reducing to echelon form. So once, when we have this system, let's just remind ourselves how to solve this system, but we already know how to do this because we have had our previous videos which explain how to solve system of linear equations. Now, <clears throat> so we want a zero in this position and then a zero in this other position. 
we and we're using this three three a so how do we get a zero in this position to get a zero in that position what we want is we want row two minus a third row one so this is what will give us our new row two so if i take row two the whole of this row two minus a third of row one i get the new row two <clears throat> then how do i get the new row three so i would have um, row three the current row three plus two over three of row one so this will give us the new row three so let's just do that so taking row two minus a third row one i have uh, a minus a third of three a gives me zero then i have b 4b minus a third of 2b which is 2b over 3 then the same here is 3 and this would be 12b minus 2b which gives us 10b over 3 and that's what i have here and here we have uh, negative 3c minus a third of uh, minus a third of negative c so this is the same as this is this minus minus it will be positive so we have three and that will be negative nine c plus c which gives us a negative eight c over three that's what we have so doing that also on the right side would have q minus a third of p which we have there now we do the same now for remember that for the third row is what we are using and doing that gives us this doing that gives us this now so we now have this what we now require in our next step is to have a zero in this position that's what we call in our next step so that means for us to have a zero in this position we need to row three minus 13 out of 10 of row two row 3 minus 13 out of 10 of row 2. So let's just do that and see what we get. So that is in our next step. You remember that the first row will remain the way it is. 3a plus 2p minus c is p. And the second row remains the way it is and it is 10 out of 3b plus negative 8 out of 3c and this gives us q minus a third of p q minus a third of p now this is what we want as zero in this position and so what we have is 13b out of 3 minus 13 over 10 of row 1 and row 1 the element in row 1 is 10 out of 3b and this gives us zero in this position that gives us zero in this position so what about in this position here so we have 13 out of 3c minus 13 out of 10 of negative 8 over 3c so what does this give us 
remember this minus and that minus will give us positive. So the LCM here is 30. And this will be 130, see? And this is positive. What is H times the T? Now, I'd already done this. I, I'd already done, done this, so we have the second part. But you can use your, you can use your calculator. And this is what I was getting. I was getting 234 out of 30 C. The same thing we do it on the right side, and when we do it on the right side, we have this on the right side. So just the same way we solve um, this kind of equations, we begin from the equation at the bottom as we solve going up. But at this time, we don't, we don't want to solve. We just want to see whether we have the, our V can be written as a new combination of the vectors in S. And from this, last equation it is clear that we can get the value of c and if the value of c can be obtained it means that when we move to this second equation here we can obtain the value of b when we substitute in c and so that means again moving to the first equation we cannot get a and so that means our scalars a b c exist and so since the scalars abc exist, we say that the vector v can be written as a new combination of the vectors in S. Now, remember that the v that we chose was arbitrary. So that means any other vector that you're choosing in R3, any other vector that you're choosing in R3 would accept to be written as a new combination of the vectors in S. In other words, S spans R3. So that's how we show that S spans R3. And so that's what we'll be doing. That's what we'll be doing. So we look at another example and see how we, we can show that a, a vector, a set, a certain subset spans a vector space. So the question here, do the vectors A B and C <clears throat> span R3. Do they span R3? So again, just as we said, we pick a vector, an arbitrary vector in R3, and see whether that arbitrary vector in R3 can be written as a new combination of the vectors A, B, C. And if that is possible, then we say that these vectors A, B, C span R3. So that is what I've said. In my working, I've said to find to find out if the vectors A, B, C form a spanning set of R3, choose any vector V in R3 and determine if V can be written as a new combination of the vectors A, B, C. So we've chosen V to be arbitrary, P, Q, R. And we want to see whether this vector, whether the scalars X, Y, Z, exist such that x times this plus y times that plus z times this would give us pqr now so just expanding this it's very easy for us it would be 2x minus 3y plus z equals to p which we have here and then we would have 3x minus 4y plus 3z equals to q which you have there, and then you have 2x plus 3y plus 2z is equal to r, which you have there. So we have this system of linear equations, and we solve this by reducing to echelon form. And so you are familiar with this. It means you must have a zero in this position and a zero in this position. So to get a zero in the second row here, the second row first column, is that we would have row 3, no, row 2, minus 3 over 2, row 1. So when you do that, it means 3 minus 
2 over 3 times this, that would give us 0 in this position. What about in this position? We would have negative 4y minus 3 over 2 of negative 3y. Negative 3y. And this gives us, I was getting a half of y. Let's see. Let's see whether that's true there. It will be, the LCM will be 2 then. And this will be negative 8y, and then plus 9y, which is, of course, a half y. Now, you do the same for this. It will be q minus 3 over 2p, and that's what I have. And then we come to this other one. Does that mean, let me clear this. And then move my slide up. Okay, that is okay now. So to get a zero in this third position, in this third row, first column, we would just want to subtract row one from row three to get our new row three. So when we do that. 2x from 2x will give us 0. Negative 3y from 3y would give us 6y. And then z from 2z will give us z. And then p from r will give us r minus p. We we'll proceed to get a 0 in this position. So to get a 0 in this position, what we need is row 3 minus 12 of row 2. This gives us our new row 3. So that when I, if I multiply this by 12, I would have 6y. Subtract from this, I would have a 0 here. Multiply this by 12, I would have 18y. Subtract, no, 18z. Subtract from this and you get negative 17z. The same thing is done to this. Multiply this by 12 and then subtract from this. When I did that, this is what I got. This is what I got. So as my final matrix or the final equations. Now, so we look at the last equation and see whether it tells us that we can find scalars or not. But when I look at it, I can see that we can find z when we divide both sides by negative 17. That means the scalars exist. The scalars x, y, z exist. That's why I've said from the last equation, it is clear that the scalars x, y, z exist. And so the vector v that we chose arbitrarily can be written as a linear combination of the vectors a, b, c. And therefore, the vectors a, b, c form a spanning set of R3. So we just look at this last equation and tell whether the scalars exist. So when you divide both sides, we can see that you can find z. And so that means the scalars can be found. Can you look at another question, another example again? We have this example. We are given S is a set of these elements. So these are vectors. So these are subsets. And these are the vectors. This is another vector. This is another vector. Does S span R3? Does it span R3? So again, just as we've been doing, we choose an arbitrary vector in R3, and my vector here is PQR, and we want to see whether we can get scalars x, y, z, such that x times the first vector plus y times the second vector plus z times the third vector will give us our arbitrary vector P. So as we did before, this will be x, plus 2y minus z equals to p. That's what I have. And then multiplying the second one would be 0x plus 2y 
minus 2z equals to q. And then we have x minus y plus 2z equals to r. So we reduce this to a form, and when we do that, the final equation that we come up with is this. This is the final equation that we come up with. So as I have already stated, we look at the last equation and see whether it's telling us that we can obtain the scalars or not. So we want to see, using this last equation, can we obtain the scalars? Now, so what does the last equation imply? This last equation implies that x, 0x plus 0y plus 0z is a non-zero value. You see, the left side is giving us zero, but the right side is giving us non-zero value. And therefore, it's impossible to get those, that, those scalars x, y, and z, such that when you model them by zeros, and then the sum up, you would get an unzero value. It's impossible to get those scalars. Those scalars do not exist. And therefore, it means, since those scalars do not exist, it means that the vector we chose, the arbitrary vector we chose in R3, cannot be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S. Cannot be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S. And therefore, what that tells us is that S does not span R3. S does not span R3. So I've looked at one, two examples where S spans R3, and now one example where S does not span R3. What is very important here is that we're looking at the last equation and telling we and wanting to see whether we can get scalars. But if you look at this last equation here. The scalars do not exist. Let's look at another example where we have now polynomials. And we'll just do it the same way we're doing, we've been doing the, the rest. So a given S, which comprises of these polynomials, the first polynomial there, the second polynomial, the third polynomial, does this S form a spanning set of P2? where P2 is a set of all polynomials of degree at most 2. Does it form a spanning set of P2? So just as we did in the previous examples, we will choose an arbitrary polynomial in P2 and want to see whether that arbitrary polynomial can be written as a linear combination of these three polynomials in S. So that's what I would say. Choose any polynomial V in P2 and determine if it's a linear combination of the polynomials in S. So this is what I chose to be my arbitrary polynomial. Pt squared plus Qt plus minus R. So for us to see whether this is a linear combination of these other polynomials, we need to see whether we can obtain scalars x, y, z such that x times the first polynomial plus y times the second polynomial plus z times the third polynomial gives us our arbitrary polynomial. So just expand, let's expand this x t square 2x t 3x. 2y t square. So just expand all of it, and this is what you get. And then collect the like terms and factorize. What I mean by that is that I would collect the ones that have x, that the ones that have t square. For example, I have x t square. plus 2 y t square plus 3 z t square is equals to p t square. 
You can see that it is twice common, so it can cancel out. When you factorize, you can cancel out. And so what you will be left with will be x plus 2y plus 3z is equals to p. That's what I have here. That's what I have for this first equation. We can do, we can also collect those that have t. And in this case, I have 2xt plus 3yt plus 5z, 5zt equals qt. And again, t is common, so you cancel out t, and you've been left with the 2x plus 3y plus 5z equals to q. And that's what I have here. So we can also collect the constants, those without t, those without t, and so those without t that I have, we have uh, 3x plus 7y plus 6z is equals to negative r, and that's what I have. So with this system of linear equations, we can reduce it to echelon form to obtain this. Reduce it to echelon form, we obtain that. And then look at the last equation and see whether the scalars exist. And I can see that from this last equation, if I were to divide both sides by negative four, I would obtain z. So that means that the scalars exist. The scalars x, y, z exist. And therefore it means that the arbitrary polynomial that we chose in P2 can be written as a linear combination of the polynomials in S. Of the polynomials in S. And so since V was arbitrary, it means that any other polynomial chosen from P2 can be written as a linear combination of the polynomials in S. So every polynomial in P2 can be written as a linear polynomial as a new combination of the polynomials in S. So what that means is that S spans P2. S spans P2. So we look at another example. So this example I want to look at. And let u1 be 2, 6, and u2 be 1, 4. Show that this set u1, u2, the set comprising of u1, u2, is a spanning set of R2. So as we said, we choose an arbitrary vector in R2 and see whether that arbitrary vector can be written as any combination of u1 and u2. So I chose the arbitrary vector V, which is PQ. And I sought to find whether the scalars AB <coughs> exist such that A times the first vector U1 plus B times U2 would give me V. So when you expand this, you would have 2A plus B equals to q, no, equals to p, and uh, 6a plus 4b gives you q. So you can, you can as you've been doing, as the same way you've been doing, you can reduce this to conform and see whether the scalars exist. Or, since it's easier for us to get the determinant of this matrix, just look at this matrix and see whether it has a determinant. So if it has a determinant or if it's invertible, then it means that the A, B are unique. They can be obtained. So that's what I've said. Since the matrix 2, 1, 6, 4 is invertible, 
and you see this matrix are formed by just extracting the coefficients of this the coefficient of 2 and b the coefficient you know, the coefficient of 2a and b the coefficient of uh, 6a and this is for b so i just extract the coefficients here and looking at this matrix we can get the determinant of this matrix and since the determinant can be obtained it means <clears throat> that we can find the values of a and b and so that means that the matrix the vector that we chose arbitrarily can be written as a linear combination of u1 and u2 and therefore the set u1 and u2 spans r2. We can also say that this span equals to r2. Even in the previous examples, you can equate. And so that is how we look at, that's how we tell whether a certain subset spans a vector space. Mm -hmm.